we continue uh, discussing James Stewart's section 5.5 of his calculus text. Section 5.5 is on the substitution rule. In a previous vidcast, 5.5a, we talked about how to do the substitution rule for indefinite integrals. In this vidcast, we want to talk about how to do the substitution rule for definite integrals, such as the integral from a to b of. Um, this looks mangled, and, and uh, be sure to, to look at the previous vidcast 5.5a um, to get a sense of what we're doing with the substitution rule. But basically, the substitution rule is where you have a function of a function, and you have the derivative of the inner function somewhere there in the environment, or you can manipulate uh, the environment to where you have uh, the derivative of the inner function. And when, when this is the case, you can change this complicated looking thing into a simpler, the integral um, in an indefinite situation, the integral of f of u du, um, where u is g of x. And so then g prime dx is du. And so uh, we can often then uh, integrate uh, the, uh, the, the, the u uh, in a way that makes it simpler. Again, if you don't know what I'm saying, go back and look at 5.5a. But it's uh, just a little bit more complicated with definite integrals. Um, so for example, in the previous vidcast, we did the indefinite integral of 2x times the square root of 1 plus x squared dx. This is ripe for substitution, because if you make that 1 plus x squared to be u, uh, then du is going to be 2x dx. And so we have a u to the 1 half power uh, in the middle, in, the, in this center part, and 2x dx becomes du. So we have u, a function of u du. And, and it's much easier to integrate that than what we're looking at here. Now, the problem when you, when you make it a definite integral, say the integral from 0 to 3 of that function, is that the 0 and the 3 work for the x function functions, but the 0 to 3 won't work with regard to the u function when you substitute. So you have to convert the 0 and the 3 to something that works for the u function. Now, you can, of course, go ahead and solve the indefinite integral and then plug in the 0 and 3 after you've already done it and have gone back to an x kind of equation. Uh, so you just do the integral uh, uh, at 3 uh, minus the integral at 0. Uh, so you can do it after you're done, but sometimes it's preferable uh, to have it fully converted into a formula uh, that works in, in uh, the u form. Uh, so for example, if I make 1 plus x squared be the u, um, what then are the a and b uh, from a to b, what, what, from 0 to 3, what, what, are they going, what is it going to look like? Well, um, this is the function we're dealing with. Um, if, I, if I make 1 plus x squared equal u, then a at u is going to be uh, 1 plus x squared at 0, which is going to be 1 plus 0 equals 1. Now the b then uh, becomes 1 plus 3 squared, uh, which is 10. So now, with the substituted form, I have the integral from 1 to 10 of 2 thirds u to the third half power du. Where did that come from? Well, the previous, in the previous vidcast, we saw that the integral of uh, 2x times the square root of 1 plus x squared dx, the integral of that, if you use substitution, is going to be 2 thirds u to the third half power uh, du. And so now we have fully converted um, this integral into a, a form uh, that we can actually uh, then use um, in a definite form. Uh, so that's kind of how it works for definite uh, integrals. One last thing I want to tack on here uh, that uh, uh, Stuart slips into this uh, section uh, has to do with some, some basic principles with even and odd functions. An even function is one where the uh, where uh, f of the opposite of x equals f of x. So this is a, a function that has symmetry with regard to the y-axis. It looks exactly the same on the right of the y-axis as, as it looks on the left of the y-axis. An odd function is where f of the opposite of f of negative x equals negative f of x. This is a 
uh, has symmetry with regard to the origin, uh, where if you have if you have something in the upper right quadrant on the one side, it's going to be in the lower left quadrant on the other side. So um, evens and odds functions as from way back at the beginning of the of the textbooks. Now some rules, common sense rules apply to the integrals of these functions. So for even functions, the integral from negative a to a is going to be twice the integral from 0 to a. The reason why this makes sense is because the area under the curve on the right hand is going to be exactly the same as the area under the curve on the left hand. Uh, because, as I said, for an even function, we have symmetry with regard to the y-axis. And so the integral from negative a to a is simply going to be twice the integral uh, from 0 uh, to a. Again, that's, that's just common sense if you can picture uh, the graph of, a, of an even function. Similarly, for an odd function, the integral from negative a to a is going to be 0. This, again, makes sense uh, because what you have on the, the one side in a positive is going to be a negative on the other side and vice versa and so they're going to cancel each other out and so for any odd function uh, the integral from the negative from a negative point to a positive point it's going to cancel each other out and you're going to have zero and so uh, that is um, the rest of section 5.5 of James Stewart's calculus text on the substitution rule